This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and the lock I have for you today is the Cobra 61P padlock from Hugo Locks. I don't see many of these Hugo Locks in the US. They're apparently a company out of Frankfurt, Germany. Not too many of their locks make it across the Atlantic. But there's a few really, really interesting things in their lineup. And that brings me to why this lock is a part at the beginning of our video. It's because this core right here has some features that are sufficiently unusual that I'd like you to see them before we start picking so you have a better understanding of what I'm doing. This core is Hugo's, I believe the model is GR5S. It's at the top of their lineup. It's a six pin dimple lock. You can see a pretty nice little keyway there. Six active pins, another five passive pins. But the real show are these three little silver dots you see on that side and again on the other side. And what they are are trap pins. We have six of them. And even more interesting than having six trap pins, which is the most I've ever seen on a lock, is the fact that they all engage at the exact same time. To open this lock, you have to turn the core clockwise. And if you think about the way these trap pins are arranged in there, they're actually at both at 45 degree angles, so they're, they're angled like this. When you turn this core 45 degrees, your three trap pins on the left will drop into the side of the keyway, and your three trap pins in on the right will drop above the key pins. So all of them engage at the same time. That obviously is going to be a problem. So we'll have to get a little bit creative in dealing with it. And I have to say, as I did brainstorm on ways to deal with these trap pins, I ran across what can only be described as a design flaw that we can take advantage of to open this padlock. So. Let me put all of this back together and then we will pick it and afterwards take this core apart and you can see all the internal pieces. Okay, be right back. Okay, we got the lock back together, so let's get to picking. As we do that, let's talk about the challenges that it will, will face. First, it's a really, really heavy lock, so it's gonna be difficult to hold. We have a thick retainer plate and a spinner that this core is behind. So we're picking at a core that's well set into the lock. Then we have, I think I showed you before, some really nasty bidding there, or I'm sorry, warding there. And what we're gonna have to do is use a curved pick to get the higher set pins. I don't use a curved flag very often, but for locks like this, it's absolutely necessary. Finally, let's talk about picking direction, which is the largest challenge of picking this lock. We have to pick this lock in the clockwise direction. We have to tension it in the clockwise direction. What I would normally do is pick in the counterclockwise direction. Unfortunately, there is no way we can fit a pick on the left side of the pins there. We're gonna have to put it in on the right side. That means we'll be picking in the clockwise direction also. What that means is that it will be very, very hard to allow counter rotation when we're picking. It makes a relatively easy pick if we were picking it counterclockwise into a very difficult pick. So let's get some tension in here and get started. Okay. One's loose, two's loose, three is binding, got to click out of him, four, binding a little bit, a little bit of counter rotation. Okay, I think we got four set. Okay, click out of five, make sure I didn't drop anything else, we're good. And let's see on six. Okay, little counter rotation there. Let's go back to the beginning. One's loose, two's loose. Click out of three. Okay, four definitely dropped down when we pick six, so putting him back up. Okay, I think four set. 
five and six back to the beginning. Okay, one was binding, we gotta click out of him. Two was binding. Okay, and I think we're open now. I am not going to rotate this too far. As I mentioned, we are really, really close to trap pins coming in from the right and from the left. The ones on the left will drop into the keyway, and we can deal with that by just putting this tension wrench down the side of the keyway there. That will prevent any of them from falling down, and there's no way we can prevent them from dropping into the key pin holes. Well, we could stuff it with dental floss or something like that, but we're not going to do that. Let me just turn this and drop the trap pins. Okay, the trap pins dropped, and right now you can see there's a massive amount of movement when those trap pins are set. That's because they're really, really deep spools. That makes them hard to pick out of the way, but what it also does is allow that motion. And I referenced before a design flaw with this lock. Well, at the far end of that motion, the padlock opens. So you can actually open the lock without dealing with any of the trap pins. Um, it's kind of pointless to put this core in this lock. So what we will have to do though is take care of those trap pins before we can um, put, take this core apart to gut it. So let me do that now. They should be under slots two, four, and six. Okay, counter rotation on two. I think we got that one set. I don't feel, oh, there we go. There's the one on four. Okay, we got him set. Let's see. I, there we go. I think that was the one under four now. And let's check for six. Hmm, that one's not falling down. Let me actually reopen this. What I sometimes have to do is keep pressure on the shackle because the shackle will stop the core from turning. Okay, I think we got two. Definitely nothing from two. Okay, four, counter rotation. I think we got him. Six, counter rotation. There we go, got him. Okay, so the trap pins are a little bit difficult to open, but not too bad. Now let's take this lock apart and I can show you what's inside. First thing we have to do to gut this lock is remove the shackle. It's one of those locks where the security nut is on the same side that the shackle is secured. A few other locks that do that, the Stanleys do that. Um, I'm not really sure why. It really makes taking them apart rather difficult and unnecessarily so, but it's what we've got to do. Okay, we got the shackle out. Now a different size hex wrench will remove the security nut. Okay, we got that out. Let's get our tray over here so we don't lose any of these parts. Now, once we got the security nut out, this retainer will slide out. The retainer holds the, the spinner as well. We'll take a closer look at them in a moment. And here is the core. Okay, to take this core apart, we need to remove the clip on the back. There we go, that came off pretty easily. 
Now let's get a key and a follower. And of course we are going to have to be very, very careful when we take this out so we don't drop any of those trap pins. I think probably sideways is the best way to do this. And Okay, we dropped a ball, jeez, okay. Um, first things first, I seem to have dropped, what are those, pins five and six. I think they go in this way based on what I felt. Then we also dropped a ball bearing. Where did that go? Oh, here it is. I'll put that ball bearing in slot eight. That went right in the side of the core there, and I think that was just a detent giving it some sort of bias to center. Now we have five passive pins on the bottom. Let me try to drop them in the associated number slot. And let's get the rest of these key pins out now. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Let's get these arranged just a little bit better. And something you may not have noticed, but these passive pins are actually different sizes. Adds, to, adds for a lot of new possibilities with master keying and key control. Okay, number one is a standard steel pin. Okay, let's get that spring out. Okay, now in two, we have actually three pins we have to get out. We have the first trap pin, the second trap pin, And then the normal driver pin, which appears to also be a steel anti-drill pin. Okay, we have a barrel pin in slot three. Then on four, again, we have three pins to deal with. We have, here's one trap pin, the other trap pin, and then a spool. Okay, slot five, we have another very, very tiny spool, probably the smallest one I have ever seen. And then on six, again, we have three pins, one trap pin, two trap pins, and the final driver pin. Okay, that was, it's a lot of little pieces. Okay, let me arrange these just a little bit better so you have a good view of these. Okay, and oh, some interesting things on the core. A lot of drill protection that I can give you close-ups of. And looks like we have some more drill protection on in the Bible. We have three pins here for drill protection right in the front of the keyway. There's another two pins here that you can't see because they are below this brass slug that fits in here. And if you're wondering why that brass slug is in there, it has to do with the double Euro cylinder. They actually have a steel plug that goes all the way in that would connect it to the other side that gets cross pinned through these holes. 
So this is designed to be in a double euro, euro cylinder. That's why we have such small pin stacks. So five pieces of drill protection here, a couple more in the core, which I'll show you, and then some steel pins in the front, really a ton of drill protection. And that's in addition to a really thick retainer plate and a spinner. So they were really concerned about someone drilling into this apparently. Okay, let's take a close look here. Looking at the key pins, all standard with one and two being steel. Uh, the driver pins, we have standards in one and two, again steel. The driver in three is a barrel pin and we have some really short spools in slots four through six. Then we have our passive pins for slots one through five and our six trap pins in slots two, four, and six. Then in eight, we have a little ball bearing that goes in the side of the core here. That's just a detent that gives it a little bias towards center, probably made picking a little bit harder. Also on the core, you can see we have two pieces of drill protection right up front and between slots one and two and some pretty significant counter milling there. You can see it's, it's some of the deeper counter milling I've seen in, in cores like this. And wow, we have some more drill protection in the bottom. Why, I'm not entirely sure. Usually you wouldn't protect passive pins from, from drilling, but I guess they're not joking here. They don't want anything drilled out. Okay, this has been our Hugo Cobra 61P padlock with the, what's the name of this core? I think the RS5, I don't remember the name of the core. I said it in the first slot of this. In any case, six trap pins, we got through it, took advantage of a design flaw, and I am happy to be done with this lock. That's all I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.